own internationally acclaimed two-time author and motivational speaker extraordinaire. Give it up for the host of the Brandon Holt Show, it's Brandon Holt!
This game changer is a multi-talented performing artist specializing in poetry and music. With an eclectic sound and style, as well as commanding presence, she continues to flourish in an array of entertainment roles. Hailing from Long Beach, California, she is known as one of Z Publishing's best emerging poets. She's been writing poetry her entire life. On the music front, she has been working on a new music project for the past three years. Her first two singles, Butterfly and Brown Shoe Daddy, dropped this past summer. Her latest album, The Renaissance, was considered for the 63rd Grammy nominations. She is no stranger to The Brandon Holt Show, appearing on the first four episodes. Brandon Holt Show welcomes the lovely LaVette Cherie. This amazing woman is a former pro athlete turned actress. Born in Hawaii, she began writing and acting at the age of 10 for news, books, and feature films. After studying journalism and TV production from the University of Oklahoma, she pursued her master's at Bowie State University, where she was a three-sport athlete named NCAA Woman of the Year. She then went on to write for America's Most Wanted and NBC's News 4. This best-selling author made Amazon's bestsellers list with her self-guided book, The Beauty of Your Strength. The Brandon Holt Show welcomes the lovely and talented Tiffany Tony. Tiffany, good evening. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, it's so good to have you. And how's it going out in California? I hear the weather is horrible. You know, horrible, I guess, is relative. But yeah, for us, it was pretty bad. (laughs) Well, Tiffany, I've been following you for quite some time. And you're an author and you have a best-selling book of positive affirmations. We need some positive affirmations the way that the world is right now. Tell us about your book. So I wrote The Beauty of Your Strength about two years ago. And um, it's a place that we're all familiar with called Rock Bottom. I'm sure you can relate. You've probably been there once been or twice. There. Yeah, so I More was at Rock Bottom. More than one time. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I was at what I thought to be Rock Bottom. And one day um, at 3.33 in the morning, I just heard this voice deliver me this affirmation. Mm. And it happened to me for about a month straight. And so I started writing them down. And as I was reading them out loud, I realized that... Um, they were providing me the healing that I was looking for and the clarity that I was looking for. And so through my spirit, I just realized that it's time to, you know, put these in book format so that they can help other people in the way that they're helping me. So, so, when, so when you hit rock bottom, did, <laughs> did something happen in your life? Not that you have to discuss it, but of did course. something tragic happen to where you just said, I don't know where else to go, but up from here. Well, you know, when you take risks in life, um, moving to California was one of those risks for me. And I was very young. I was very naive, didn't have a lot of money in my bank account. And I just wasn't ready for um, how cruel the world actually is. You know, you you watch Disney movies, you believe in all of these mythical and magical characters, and you think that that's the way the world is going to be as a young girl. And then you step out and you realize that it's not that. And so... I think just facing that truth and figuring out what do I do with that truth and how do I still operate as the loving, giving, caring, generous person that I was raised to be in a world full of people, you know, some people who don't necessarily have those same values and how do I maintain my sense of self? So it was kind of just like one bad decision kind of snowballed into other bad decisions. And then I found myself in a place where I didn't recognize myself anymore. You so know? It- so let's go back to the positive affirmation. Yeah, are, are these affirmations that you came up with on your own? And do you still use these every day? How do you apply the affirmations? Because maybe Absolutely. someone is so, watching who needs to hear this. Definitely. I did come up with them on my own with the help of uh, the creator. And um, I'll just read you one of them really quickly. Okay. Um, one of them is, the light within me is bright enough to positively influence others. Hmm. So the book is a 30 day guide and it basically um, each day is a different affirmation. 
and you say it out loud and it just gives you the strength to make it through that day and just to kind of look at the glass as half full. And so this book, is it available in audio form as well? That's coming next, but right now it's only available um, in written form. It's on Amazon. Um, a lot of people have actually reached out to me directly for it and I'm you know, sign a copy and send it to them and give a personal message. But right now it's only available printed, but the audiobook is coming in the next few months. And congratulations, best selling author. So you want, so you're working on another book. Tell us I about am. the second book. I am. So the second book is very similar to this one. Um, I divulge a little more about my life and, and the details of my journey in the second book, but it's definitely going to continue with the positive affirmations because you know, I've had a positive response. A lot of people have reached out. I mean, black, white, Asian, Latino, Mexican, um, people from all over the world of different ages have reached out and said that the book touched them. So I feel like, you know, it's part of my mission to continue on with that. So you're also an actor, you're a director, you're a producer, mm -hmm. and you're currently working on your first feature film. I want to say congratulations to you. Thank you. You traveled a long road to get there. Bora, and you are the lead, plus you wrote the script. That's got to be that, that's got to be challenging. You're the lead and you wrote the script. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, um, I'm wearing a lot of hats <laughs> making this project, but it's the first feature film that I've ever produced and that I've ever been a lead in. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I knew that um, in order for me to sort of carve out my niche in Hollywood, that I would have to write the story myself mm. because I don't see anyone else like me when I'm watching TV and film. And so I knew that it was something I have to do on my own. So I, I pretty much just pulled together a bunch of my life experiences, people that I know, people that I've experienced and carved that into this character and used it to create this story. Um, Bora is a psychological thriller about a girl who picks up a hitchhiker. Um, initially, uh, uh, the road trip is to find herself. She meets this hitchhiker and then things spiral out. Wow. Of her yeah. So. Action packed. <laughs> Definitely. So you're also training to do light choreography and action. Kind of tell the viewership, what does that mean exactly? Yeah, definitely. So fight choreography is basically martial arts, but it's mm. tailored to on screen. So um I have a couple of really amazing mentors. One of them is a guy named Andre McCoy. He goes by China McCoy and he doubled Morpheus in the matrix. Oh, wow. And so okay. that's who I'm, I'm learning from. And it's pretty wow. amazing him and um, a guy named RL Scott, who's also directing Bora. Um, and you know, they, they just have so much experience. China has been in so many films um, playing an action star and he's traveled all over the world. Um, experiencing different cultures and I'm learning how to fight on screen from these people. So it's really a blessing. And we also have a stunt woman who's very well known in Hollywood coming on the show. So maybe you can connect with her after the show and she can link you into some action stunt films. Definitely. I'm so excited to meet her. <laughs> what, in, what inspires you for greatness? Man, you know, I think at a very young age, I realized that whatever my purpose was, that it was more than just about me. Um, I wanna be a person who leaves a legacy and leaves breadcrumbs behind for the next generation so that they can be better, better humans. And my family really inspires mm. me. You know, I wanna be able to provide um, a healthy, happy, stress-free life for them in, in a chaotic world. And so that's, Every day I think about them and it gives me the strength to keep That's going. powerful. And your story of positive affirmations is so needed today. And we wish the best for you. And we hope that you come back on the show when your second book comes out. So how can people follow you, Tiffany? So I am on Instagram and Twitter. Um, my You can find me at underscore Tiffany, Tony underscore. So it's Tiffany like the diamond, <laughs> Tony like the boxer underscore. And, and you do have a famous <laughs> uncle who was a boxer. I do. Yeah. James Tony is my so, uncle and he's wonderful. So has he taught you some Learned moves? Is that what, has he taught you some moves that have helped you in your. <laughs> <laughs> he has actually posted a video of me doing some mitt work with him on Instagram, which was really fun. Uh, so, that's great. That's yeah. great. Well, Tiffany, thank you for coming. Everybody that is Tiffany Tony. Make sure you get her book. Stay on the lookout. Her next book is coming out soon. She's an actor, directress, producer, writer. She's doing big things in Hollywood. Tiffany, wish the best of luck to you. Thank you. All right, everybody, before our next guest comes out, let's go to commercial.
It's time to hydrate in style. Crystal Bruce is an Air Force veteran, founder and CEO of Crystal Cups, specializing in tumblers from hand-painted wood grain, glitter, hydro dipped. Today, you can personalize your tumbler with any design from sports teams, logos to social media handles. Invest in your cup today by ordering on Instagram or Facebook at crystal underscore cups and shipping is available. Thomas, and it's my pleasure to be a guest on the Brandon Holt Show for December 29th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm very excited to share what it means to be an opera singer, how I got started with this, and uh, it is just such an honor to be able to share this with y'all and to be invited here. So, I hope to see you there. This dynamite opera singing genius hails from Houston, Texas. His musical journey began in the church at a young age for 13 years. His electric voice graced many singing choirs. His freshman year in high school, his voice dropped and became a bass. His senior year, he received a music scholarship from Louisiana State University specializing in opera singing. He's performed in operas from the United States to Italy and plans to complete his Masters of Music in voice. The Brandon Holt Show proudly welcomes the talented opera singing sensation Joshua Thomas. Joshua Thomas in the house. Hello. <laughs> bravo, bravo on, the, on a great performance, everybody. This is Joshua Thomas, opera singing sensation from Houston, Texas. Joshua, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Man, I got to drop my I gotta drop my voice like that. Is, is it deep enough to sing bass? Oh, there you go, right there. <laughs> So, so Joshua, first I want to ask, so what got you into singing? I know you said you started in the church. When did you realize that you had a gift? Uh, so, yes, I started in the church. Uh, I remember all the hymns from the church, listening to the piano, to the tambourine, to the choir. But um, it wasn't until sometime in middle school when I'd been in choir for some years that I was like, oh, I got a little bit of a voice. I can hold a tune. And uh I hadn't done anything solo at that point. I'd only done choirs. And so your voice actually dropped at what age? That'd have been 13 or 14, my freshman year of high school. Okay, so, we, so it dropped into a base. I, I just wanna know, it's, it's really fascinating to see a young African-American man who's 21 years old, who chose to sing opera. So why opera? Uh, so in high school, I went to the high school for the performing and visual arts. So for, the, for those four years, they had trained me for classical voice. Um, so in my senior year, uh, lots of people have been telling me, you got a good voice, you should go into radio. People have said, you should go into opera. So I was considering both of them for college. And um, I listened to some famous people seeing opera that were bassists, uh, that were African-American as well. And I was like, if they could do it, then I think I could do it as well. So that motivated me to go ahead and do it. And uh, here I'm now at LSU. So Joshua, what exactly is opera music? So opera music it is, um, let's see, they call it a, uh, it's a form of acting on stage. It's not necessarily theater. We call it singing theater hmm. because it incorporates the acting from theater along with the uh, vocal techniques needed to carry a voice over an entire hall without any amplification from mics. So it is that art. That's what we call opera. So if you're not listening to opera, who are some of your favorite artists that you listen to? Well, personally, I'm an old soul. So I'm, I'm young, but I'm an old soul. So I would still love Temptations, Earth, Wind, Fire. So that's what I jam to all the time. Okay. So when you think about opera, what kind of lessons, life lessons, have you learned since you started singing opera music? Uh, it's taught me a lot about being able to self-motivate. Um, you have to be able, it, it's a very tough industry. You have to have mm. tough skin. It's mm. not easy. Um, 
So you have to be able to motivate yourself to keep on going, to keep on striving, to want to get better and to want to constantly improve, improve yourself. Okay. Now, is there a, a specific country or city that's the hub of opera music? Because I know you went to perform in Italy and I'd like to know about that experience. Is, where, where is opera music really in high demand? Uh, honestly, it's pretty high everywhere, but the highest I would say would be in New York at the Met Metropolitan Opera. Um, in Italy, there's a company, La Scala, that's a very famous company. Um, but honestly, all over the country, you, you'll find uh, many theaters uh, that have opera. And as far as Italy goes, that was a fantastic experience that uh, I was able to do my uh, going into my junior year of uh, college. And they allowed me to see some houses out there and get those roads under my belt. And shout out to LSU. You go to LSU, you want to give a shout out to your school? Yes, sir. Go Tigers. <laughs> shout out to my teachers, everyone there. Thank <laughs> y'all. I, I don't want to disappoint you, Joshua. I'm a Longhorn fan, but since this is LSU night, I'm going to go with you on that. Hey, thank you. Let's get it. <laughs> so where do, you, where do you see yourself in the future? You're 21 years old, graduating mm -hmm. from LSU. You're going to start working on your master's degree. Very commendable. What's next for you? So what's next is uh, achieving that performing career of an opera singer, uh, being on the road 10 months out of the year, traveling city to city, performing at these different venues all over wow. the world. Mm. So that, that's the goal. That, that's great. So I've had a couple people ask, can he sing on the live feed? So is there any way for all the fans out there, you can just drop one bar, one verse, uh, sure, no problem. I, I could do a little something from uh, Old Man River. That's the classic for basses. <clears throat> There's an old man calling me CCB. That's the old man that I like to be. What does he care if the world's got troubles? What does he care if the land ain't free? Old Man River, that Old Man River. They just don't go on and going along. Hey, man, bravo, bravo, bravo. I know your family is extremely proud of you. How can people follow you and keep up with your, your progress in opera? So on uh, Instagram, my handle is joshua.thomas14. And on Facebook, my name is Joshua Thomas. Um, so that's be the best way to follow me. I also have a YouTube page, Joshua Thomas as well, that I upload videos to. And Joshua, do you want to give a shout out to anyone tonight, possibly who has motivated you or inspired you throughout your journey that you wouldn't be where you are today without this person? Uh, it has to be definitely my entire family, uh, the entire community, Third Ward. They ain't a bunch of people out here singing opera from Third Ward. So Third Ward. <laughs> yeah, Third Ward, Houston. So shout out to all my family that's been supporting me since day one. Love y'all. That's great. Well, everybody, this is Joshua Thomas, opera singing sensation from Houston, Texas, goes to LSU, getting ready to start his master's degree. Big things coming for Mr. Thomas. We'll be looking out for you, Joshua. We're going to go into his second performance. Put your hands together. Comment in the chat section, Joshua Thomas. Il est 
Game Changer is a multi-talented performing artist specializing in poetry and music with an eclectic sound and style as well as commanding presence. She continues to flourish in an array of entertainment roles. Hailing from Long Beach, California, she is known as one of Z Publishing's best emerging poets. She's been writing poetry her entire life. On the music front, she has been working on a new music project for the past three years. Her first two singles, Butterfly and Brown Shoe Daddy, dropped this past summer. 
Her latest album, The Renaissance, was considered for the 63rd Grammy nominations. She is no stranger to The Brandon Holt Show, appearing on the first four episodes. Brandon Holt Show welcomes the lovely LaVette Cherie. Janisha Adams Ginyard is an actress, award-winning stunt woman, and wrestler, graduating from the University of California, Berkeley. As a student athlete, most of her life, Janisha used her foundation in athletics to transition into the Hollywood entertainment industry. She is an established and extremely talented actress and stunt woman, making a name for herself through her unparalleled dedication and skills. She is fluent in American Sign Language and trained in Taekwondo. She is known for these historic films, Godzilla, Black Panther, The Avengers, all three installments in the hit TV series, 9-11, just to name a few. The Brandon Holt Show welcomes the lovely Janisha Adams Ginyard. Hey, Janisha Adams Ginyard. <laughs> it is a pleasure to catch up with you. Thank you for joining us from Los Angeles, California. Thank you. Um, I'm in Palm Springs. Palm Springs. <laughs> yes. Janisha, I want to tell you that I am a fan. I've been following your work, and we're going to get into what it means to be a stunt woman. And let's just kind of get into how did you get into the entertainment industry? So I first got involved with the industry and doing acting. I was a sports athlete my entire life. I was a jock. I was doing a lot of, you know, print campaigns. I did, I can't even tell you how many I did for like Nike CrossFit, Nike running, Nike soccer. Um, I would get the jock roles for different shows. And, you know, from there kind of transitioned into the stunts from that athletic background I already had. And you're, and you're a acting. wrestler too. Yes, I did wrestling. I am the only national athlete that's ever <laughs> been in WOW, which is Women of Wrestling, um, the largest all-female wrestling promotion in the world. So I did them for, I mean, almost like, I think it was like almost like three or four years, but my character was Frost. So are you still wrestling now or have you retired from the four corners? <laughs> oh my God. So um, I I have done a couple wrestling projects where I'm playing like a wrestler on different shows that will come mm. out in 2021, but I'm not in the organization. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, somebody want to bring me back. We could talk about it, but I get a lot of people reaching out to me about wrestling. But if somebody catches you in the back alley, they're making a big mistake. Oh, okay. I'm putting my deep freeze. <laughs> that was my fishing move. It was the deep freeze. They get a deep freeze. Yeah, no dialogue. Right. Deep freeze. So, Janisha, let's get into what exactly is a stunt woman? Because what does that mean? So, um, we can just break down what stunts are. Like, um, for me, um, I would say a stunt is a difficult physical feat or a daring action that requires a particular skill. And it's basically for artistic purposes. So like for TV shows, uh, films, commercials, pretty much that's what a stunt would be. And then me being a stunt woman, I would perform those actions. Now are some, are some actors and actresses, do they do their own stunts or do the majority contract out to stunt men and women? Um, that's a good question. I, I think that, you know, based on just my own experience, um, being a stunt performer, that you will have is who say that they can do their own stunts and they might be able to perform a punch here and there. But as far as like getting a full master of an entire 
fight scene full speed, you're going to have a lot of stunt people in there because <laughs> one, the production companies and the, the directors, they don't want their actors getting hurt or injured, you know, uh, but you will have a lot of actors who will perform with the stunt team, especially for like large action sequences so that they can get the moves done and perform some of their moves. Because it's always good when they can do it. Um, mm -hmm. but as far as like, you're not, you're not going to have an actor who doesn't know anything about cliff dive and be like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do my own cliff dive stuff. Like, nah, bring in a professional, buddy. That's not what you do. <laughs> do and, I'm and I'm assuming you're always expanding your, your experience so that you can pretty much uh, work for, you know, stunt in any role. Is there any role that's considered just too dangerous for you that you would decline to be a part of? Oh my gosh. So I am very honest about my skill set. I'm not motivated by the money. So there, I do not do falls over 30 feet. I mm. don't do any type of motorcycle stunts. I've been called for motorcycles several times. I've been called to do, as a matter of fact, I use that example. Someone called me for a 40 foot cliff dive for a commercial, major commercial too. And I was like, no, that's not me. Um, but call this person. You know, so I'm very honest about my skills because I don't consider myself a daredevil. I'm a trained professional. Um, and so, yeah, and I can do my own stunts, you know, because <laughs> I'm <laughs> actually professionally trained and I act. But yes, I am not afraid to say no. I care about my life. I will. I want to see another day. And you were in the Black Panther. Wow. Wow. What was that experience like? Wow. What was that experience like? That was awesome. Uh, Black Panther was definitely a dream come true. I'm very big into vision boards. And so Marvel was on my vision board. And I just feel like the Lord truly rewarded me for my obedience. Um, I had to shave my head for the role. Mm. I, yeah, I totally, you know, tried to get out of it, called my pastor, called, called everybody. And <laughs> pastor gave me a word. It was like, look, if Jesus could sacrifice it all on the cross, you mean to tell me you can't sacrifice your hair? So. Right, right. Yeah, so no, Black Panther was awesome. It was just a blessing to work with Ryan Coogler because I lived in the Bay Area when I was going to college. And so I know about the whole Fruitvale um, case that, and he did that Fruitvale Station movie. So it was just, I was like, wow, this is going to be great. And um, he had come off Creed. So I really felt like it was a blessing. Now, if someone watches Black Panther tonight, who? how do they find you in the movie? Great question. Okay, so I can be identified with my tattoo over my face. I had a facial tattoo that's over the right side of my face. And if you go back to the Super Bowl commercial, I was the one who was driving. It was like, well done, my king. <laughs> yes. That's just I. <laughs> right, right. Well, let's go. So you lost a brother in Chadwick Boseman. What was that experience like for you when you got the news that he was ill and then the news that he had passed away. Yeah, that was devastating. And it still is devastating. Um, this, Yeah, yeah, that's devastating. Um, I was actually driving cross country to Tennessee. Um, and I had made a pit stop in Santa Fe because that's where my hotel was. And I hadn't even stepped into my hotel room. And part of my crew who hangs out with me, um, called me and was like, Hey, um, and they were talking weird. Like she was talking kind of crazy. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? And she was just like, Chad, Chad would die. I, I just want to make sure you wasn't in the car. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. So it, it was, it was crazy because it didn't sit well in my spirit when I saw some of the photos that had got released, like, you know, months earlier. Um, and it, I, it just, it, um, it was sad because working with him, he was so big about family on that set. I mean, he was throwing parties mm. for the crew. And I'm emphasizing, I don't care. I can tell you right now, I, I'm willing to, to cast lots, throw money on it. I don't know anybody that work in Hollywood that when they throw parties, it's for everybody. Okay. Mm. He was not an elite. I was on set with a lot of people who are elitist. Let's just be real. You know about mm. Hollywood. I'm not, I'm not saying stuff that's not real. He made sure that he, it was for family. Like, like he he threw a party, invited everybody. Mm. I'm talking about crew. I didn't care if you worked in, in, in lights, if you was a, a, a gaffer. He didn't care. It was like, come to my house, open door. Yeah. 
So did he, party. did you, did you learn any specific lessons from Chadwick that you still carry with you to this day? I, I, I don't want to say if I learned any lessons, I can't sit here and I knew what he, he was going through, mm. but to know through and still be present every day, still mm. give 100%, still fight when it was freezing cold or scorching hot. It's like, wow, can't, yeah, he just, he, that, that he's literally like a walking angel. I don't know if that's the best mm. way I can put it mm. because knowing what was those months, I'm telling you, it was crazy. You know, the, the constant schedule, the, and his schedule is way, way worse than mine. I mean, like he is number mm -hmm. one on the mm -hmm. call. And to know after the fact that he was battling this while going through all of that, mm. come on, man. I, mm. I, if anybody on set acting crazy, I just worked on a show mm. and a girl in the hair department was acting crazy. And I'm looking at mm. her like, you realize this is a blessing right now. I just worked mm. with a guy who died from colon cancer and you over here not wanting to put this wig on. Mm. And you know, yeah. life is short too, Janisha. Life is short. Yeah. We don't know what our number is going to be called. So what, what kind of word do you have for the viewership tonight? Maybe somebody out there is just dealing with a very difficult moment. Have you ever experienced an obstacle that was so extreme where you just kind of felt like just walking away from everything? And if so, how did you bounce back? Yeah, so. So um, I've done I've dealt with some challenges and and still have and let's be honest we're all dealing with this challenge right now called a pandemic mm -hmm. right COVID mm -hmm. came out of we all had plans we all thought we was about to get it in and it's like whoo whole world shut down mm -hmm. so um, I'm a person of faith I'm a strong believer I wear Team Jesus on my on my heart on my sleeve I wear it out um, if if I can say anything to anybody right now it would be a couple things one would be never to allow anybody to deter you mm. from your dreams, mm. aspirations, like and goals. That. Okay? Life is way too short. So you ain't got time to, oh, I'm going to do it tomorrow. No, tomorrow turns into yesterday, 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 yesterday. Do it now. The, your dreams are free. This stuff costs nothing to you. Follow it. Don't allow anybody to track because your days are numbered. You don't know when mm. you're here. Second mm. thing I would say is we going to be all right. Like there's this mm. song by Ty Tribbett. It's literally called We Going to Be All Right. We Going to Be All Right. God, God still reigns. He's still blessing. Stay focused. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're, if you're hanging out with people who don't speak life, who don't speak good energy. You know, why are you hanging out with somebody? And then every time you give them an idea, they're like, oh, that ain't going to work. Oh, that's mm. whack. Like, you in the wrong crew. And I don't know why you're not thinking better of yourself. You know what I mean? So love yourself. So then you like don't that. do extra stuff. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. And, and the last thing I'm gonna say, and people laugh at me when I say this, but leave, you don't have to wait for the period. You can leave at the comma. Okay, so mm -hmm. one of my favorite words is disengaging. So I don't allow people to come talk to me crazy or say anything off the wall. I'd be like, disengaging. Mm, that's right? great. Yeah, because you have to control what you let in here and let in here. So you start talking crazy. I, I don't need to let you finish your sentence. I really don't. I'm gonna leave at this comment and skadoodle on out of here so i would say that i just want to empower people inspire them like, like that. yeah you you, oh. you can do this. yeah don't do yourself a disservice don't sell yourself short you know you come from good stock surround yourself with people who speak life mm. to you that's that's that's, that's right. you know you really helped me and, and one thing i just pulled out of that is to always try to surround myself with positive energy. That that really spoke to me, and I really appreciate you sharing that. Okay. How can people follow you, Janisha? Okay, so you can follow me on Instagram at Hollywood Lady J. That's <laughs> Hollywood L A D Y and the letter J. There it is. And yeah, that's basically how you mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm very cool. active on there. <laughs> Hey, you all, this is Janisha Adams Ginyard, Hollywood stunt woman, wrestler, athlete, doing big things on the West Coast. Look out for her. You know, stay follow her on Instagram, Facebook. Janisha, my heart to yours. I appreciate you stopping through. Thank you.
All right, everyone, due to unforeseen circumstances, LeVette Cherie or J. Anthony Brown are not able to be on the show, but stay tuned. They will hopefully be back in the very near future. But guess what? We have an actor, comedian who is in the house tonight. He's Mr. Funny Man. Before I bring this guy out, stay tuned. Got to go to a real quick commercial break. All right, everybody, my next guest is has been in L.A. since 1989, hailing from Gary, Indiana. I have family in Gary, Indiana. Michael Jackson comes out of Gary, Indiana, and guess what? You're never going to believe this, but he swam his way through college. He's got to tell us about that and convince us if there's some truth to that. He's an actor. He's a writer. He's the man in Hollywood. Help me welcome my man, Buddy Lewis in the house. Yes. <laughs> Brendan Old, how are you? You you know what? I, I, I feel the little just a tad bit of little hate on my little <laughs> career. I, just, I felt the shade. And you know, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just, you, you go ahead. But I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna give you a look, I'm gonna give your listeners and your look or something. Up. See that right there, Brandon? I you see that right there. You see that? Let me see. All right, that. all right, all right. We'll get we'll give that to you. Now, buddy, I there you go. Buddy, I used to swim at the YMCA. I was pretty good, but I never envisioned swimming through college, man. Push up. How was that experience? Um, it was, uh, it was, it was amazing, man, because I started swimming in high school and, mm -hmm. uh, well, a little before high school, I, I was playing football and I dislocated my, my shoulder and mm -hmm. I had a bad hip and the doctor was like, listen, you need to swim to, to fix that. And so I started swimming and I got better at it. And so that got me, uh, to one high school, the coach saw me there and the other, coach who, who um, were at, at the school I graduated from, Westside High, said, hey, you come to Westside to swim. Not only will I make sure you have a job every summer, I get you a, a, a scholarship to school. And so I left Roosevelt High School, went to Westside, and to his word, I had a job every summer uh, working as a lifeguard because he ran the, the, the pools in the city, and I got a scholarship to Howard. Wow. So, buddy, you, you had these sites – I'm assuming with a football career, injury happened, derailed, went into swimming. So many of us have these goals and ambitions to reach a certain level of our preferred destination and something tragic can happen and you have to kind of alter your course. What lesson did you learn having to make that adjustment in the opposite direction of where you were trying to go? Well, you know, and actually I had help uh, and assistance uh, in making that decision because my mother said, I'm not going to sign that permission slip anymore for you to play football. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and she said, if you're going to go play football, you're going to have to go live with your daddy and let him sign a permission slip and right. you all these injuries. Cause man, I, I was a little injury prone, you know, I, playing football. Cause I played recklessly with reckless abandon. I, I was doing it. And, um, uh, I, I had a dislocated shoulder. I had uh, hip dysplasia. I, you know, it on and on and on and on. Um, but uh, I think uh, every now and then, with 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 anything uh, athletic, uh, you you you're in inevitably you can't do that forever. Mm. So you have to start preparing in advance how you're going to use whatever it is you've obtained athletically how you're going to turn that into something else and and um that's why i admire guys like magic johnson and michael jordan who've who've turned an athletic career into business opportunities and that's that's what you have to do you have to take what you get off of the field that same competitive drive that same hunger that same get up and go spirit that you had to win on the court you got to do that in another venue and and it's, it's just simply uh changing your focus from being 
uh, to weights and shooting the basketball to reading the document and, and, and making sure you understand how this business opportunity can lead to something else. So it's just a, it's just a mindset change. And buddy, you're, you're a avid golfer. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not only self-proclaimed, self-proclaimed world's greatest comic That's right. golfer. That's right. There, there, what, there, what? There's only one or two comics <laughs> that play golf, and I'll say this, and I and and if anybody wants to dispute this, there are only one or two comics that like ah, you know, I I can whoop buddies, one that can whoop me every now and then, but just it, it, over the span of time, when you know Tiger Woods don't win them all, you know, but he's the best. So, but buddy, tell the truth though, man, how many mulligans do you play? Do you use on the front nine and the back nine? Well, it uh, first of all, uh, I see you trying to get the little golf vernacular in there, and you're trying to because I can tell you don't know nothing about it because you threw that in there. But listen, uh, mulligans are only used at the driving range, son. Uh, no Y'all hear line. that? All None. the golfers out there, but he said, don't use a mulligan unless it's at the driving range. That's right. You can have all the mulligans you want at the driving range. You just keep hitting. When we out there playing and it's getting and it's for real, there are no mulligans. This is right, right. Get, you get what you get. And, and you know, buddy, that's really uh, inspirational seeing Tiger Woods' son following in his dad's footsteps uh, yes. just for the game of golf. Golf is continuing on. And, and, and you know, I don't think there's any prouder moment for, for a father to, to, to realize that you've influenced your, your child into um, uh, to partake in what you love or what you do. And and um, uh, I think not that they're going to have the same level of success you have at it, but just the mm. fact that you've influenced them to to enjoy what you enjoy or to do what you do, and to, and you can you can you can have some competitive love and 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 fun out there doing what it is you both like to do, and 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 I, I think it's wonderful that. Um, his son is taking up golf. You know, that, that's a great thing. And it's a great sport, man. Uh, and you can play to your to your old man. I intend to play <laughs> for a while. Uh, and did you ever have a mentor in your life that was, you know, father, father figure, coach that inspired you to where you are today? Oh, several, man. You know, uh, my dad wasn't necessarily in, in, in my house. So there were several men that took up that mantle. There was my mom's. Mm. Uh, my mom's best friend was married to a guy named Aaron Walker, and he was like a father figure to me. Aaron Walker uh, taught me how to play golf. And um, um, Mr. Fisher, who's the best man, my my best man, uh, my 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 uh, first uh, and only marriage uh, that sort of had its little, you know, we will anyway. Um, he was my best man. Uh, his dad, his dad, Mr. Fisher is my, like my second father, man. And, mm. uh, he taught me uh, a whole lot about being uh, handy. He was a teacher, but he was also a handyman. So he, mm. he learned, he showed me how to, uh, carpentry and, and, and being handy, you know, around the house, those kind of mm. things. He was just, he was amazing at that. Still is to this very day. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there was my uncle George. Uh, he influenced me because he had the flyest golf gear I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. I mean, you know, this this brother turned all his old regular, uh, you know, those regular gator shoes. He turned them into golf <laughs> shoes. So he would come around, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, he had those golf shoes that were like, and he had golf shoes for like every color. Every outfit, you're like he had green gators that were golf shoes, you know. And, I was like, ah! <laughs> and they had the, the metal cleats on them, so they click when he walked in, you know. And then I was like, I gotta get me some click clack shoes, brother. I got to get me some of those right. click clack right. shoes. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> they had the click clack shoes, but I want some. <laughs> and and you know, buddy, it seems like you just have a great personality, great sense of humor, and you're very successful in what you're doing. You've uh, written for D.L. Hughley, Kim Whitley. You're doing a show with Joe Torrey, Leon's Lounge. Real quickly, what is Leon's Lounge about? And then you have a new project coming out that we'll talk about, the outlaw Johnny Black. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm on a show. Joe uh, Torrey uh, got me in, a, in an ensemble cast. There, There's a group of people. And, and uh, imagine Cheers 
with a group of black folks. And it's, <laughs> it's, that, that's what it is. It's, it's cheers with some black folks. And, you know, we all have a lounge or a place in our town that where people gather. You know, everybody knows the spot. And uh, my son in the show comes home. The, the guy who plays my son is named Adrian Marcel, a talented singer, actor. He's phenomenal. Uh, Tangi Ambrose is a waitress. Joe mm. Torrey. Doug Williams, Scroncho, there are a few people in this, and uh, Mari Morrow plays my wife. Uh, he comes back. Uh, his he had a he was a singer. His album was good. Second one flopped. He sort of on a career kind of change, getting himself together. So I'm like, hey, you don't come home and not work. You know, I don't care if you're a superstar. You got to work. So he works right. in my lounge, and so he's trying to get his career uh, back together. But finding some inspiration by being hmm. back home with his pops. So what's so, next? What's next for you? Um, whatever, uh, they are paying a check for me to do. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, man, I got a few projects. Uh, I'm also on a project uh, now called Millennials. Uh, and mm. uh, funny, but I play another owner of a bar lounge. <laughs> 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 I've been tight cast. You get bar connected lounges. with these bars yeah. and these lounges. Yeah, I play these bars and lounges. Uh, no, I play a restaurant man on this show called Millennials. Um, that was written by uh, Zach and uh, Oren Will uh, Williams. Man, these guys are really phenomenal. Over at Billy Evans Studio, Billy, you might know from uh, his work as a producer on uh, the Jamie Foxx show, Martin. Uh, he has a studio here in LA, and he um, uh, just uh, got these guys to produce the show. I got on it, and there's some talented people. If I can't remember all their names, but uh, a lot of them are internet YouTube stars, and they'll all be mad at me for not remembering their names right now. But our, uh, and I don't want to mention one and not know all the others. That be that would be like you know wrong. But yeah, they're, they're all talented people. I'm sorry, y'all. I just I, I'm old. So so, buddy. Last last question. Uh, what's your best clean joke? Clean clean clean, buddy. Clean joke of all time. Listen, 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 somebody clear it up. All right, this is the one I do when people always do this. What, 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 give me, give me a clean joke. I always do this. This is the one I always do. Okay, so what do gay horses eat? I don't know. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> what do ghetto horses eat? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I love that. I always get people with that. Uh, I know it's, I know it's corny, but I don't That's you know, good. That's good. That's good. Hey everybody, this is my main man Buddy Lewis, actor, comedian, thanks for avid golfer and a swimmer. Yeah. Buddy, we appreciate you stopping by. I promise us one thing that you will come back when your next project drops. Brandon Hold, I wouldn't miss it, man. Please uh have me back, man. I got a few things coming out. Out loud Johnny Black will be out on UMC. Definitely. Please look me up on uh Facebook and Instagram. It's Buddy Lewis Jokes. Please check me out. Uh I got a few things, I got a few characters and stuff running on my Instagram, and I, I perform with a lot of these uh superstars, Daphne Springs and some other people who are on the internet scene, Clayton Thomas and uh, they all will um, have me on their videos and I act a fool. So it's and, they can, and they can follow you on Instagram at Buddy Lewis Jokes on Instagram. Buddy Lewis Jokes. Hey, everybody. This is episode 25. Thank all the viewers for tuning in from my heart to yours. We appreciate all the great guests who have come out. We will see you next Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. You do not want to miss the next show, just like this show. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Brandon Holt Show. Follow us on Facebook, The Brandon Holt Show. Catch us on YouTube Live, The Brandon Holt Show. Here to close out the show, this young man is an opera singing sensation. Performed already two masterful performances. Getting ready to take us out. Put your hands together. Here we go, my man, Joshua Thomas. Oh,
Musik oh. 